Aloha. Welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and I'm here today with Dr. Linda Learheimer, Professor of History at Hawaii Pacific University. We're going to be talking about the topic of violence against women and the myth of rescue with Linda today. So I welcome her to the program. Thank Hi, you. Linda. Thank you for coming and wonderful to have you here. Thank you for having me. So you are a professor of history and you teach history uh, from various periods, especially mm -hmm. uh, French history as well as uh, women's studies. Right. So can you tell us a bit about your background in this Yeah, so I, um, I'm a professor of history. Uh, I have a PhD in history and my research is on French history from early modern French history, um, mostly focusing on the 17th century. But I have another hat, which is mm -hmm. um, I teach women's studies, and um, I, ha I am the coordinator of the minor in, in gender and women's studies at HPU, and I've been part of women's studies programs for my whole career since I was a graduate student. I've been teaching women's studies, uh, working for women's studies programs, so this is something that is really important to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your, your, your specialization in French history also I, I yes. know is about nuns, right? Yeah, so I work on... <laughs> on women and religion, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly on nuns, and unruly nuns <laughs> in the 17th century. Uh, nuns with an autonomous spirit. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, really yeah. interesting research I know that you do in that field. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, one of the few places where women could actually be autonomous and exert power was in the convent and in that period of history. Interestingly enough, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I'm interested in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, your work really, I mean, this topic of, of, of women and their autonomy or, or efforts to limit that, I think mm -hmm. this is, uh, you know, this is an ongoing issue, which is what we want to talk about today on yeah. this uh, topic of violence against women. And in particular, we're interested in talking about this on a global level. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I recently gave a talk about this, uh, about global feminisms and focusing on the topic of um, violence against women and what I call the myth of rescue. It's not my really my idea, but mm -hmm. based on a, a lot of recent writings um, about, uh, I guess, feminism and de decolonization, um, post-colonial feminist theory, mm -hmm. uh, although I'm not really a theorist, mm -hmm. more of a practical <laughs> yeah, I focus more on the practical. Yeah, I think it, they, they, theory and practice right. yeah, really inform exactly. each other. Or theory helps us to kind of interpret that, right? Yeah. And well, I, one, of, one of the things I love about gender and women's studies is the way that what you study um, uh, applies to real life, and mm -hmm. you can, um, you know, it's the relationship between theory and praxis. Like mm -hmm. uh, you study the theory, and then you you go out and you try and make change. Um, so as a historian of 17th century France, I don't really get to, you can't really do <laughs> activism on that subject, but uh, um, yeah, the relationship between ideas and activism is really an important one for me. Yeah, yeah, because that's interesting. I mean, what you study in, in 17th century France, and we see how the institution, you know, has changed over time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is what, history is a very dynamic thing um, mm -hmm. that, that we, we, see, we see changing uh, even up to today, we know it. The back, you know, understanding the background is important right, um, yeah. to understand the contemporary context. And yeah, in your talk, you talked about like you know the the uh, immigration order that President Trump had issued. There was an interesting element that's related to our topic today. Yeah. Could you tell us about this? Yeah. So um, most people, when they uh, talk about the executive order, only focus on um, you know whether and you know tra the travel ban. But there's also part of this. Is pretty long executive order uh, are um, instructions to the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Justice to collect information about uh, people who've been involved in terrorist activities, things like that. And one of the things that they collect information about is um, foreign nationals who um, have been engaged in violence against women. And they particularly single out honor killings as um, something that they want to collect information about and that's part of the mm -hmm. executive order. Mm. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Why, why do you think that is included in there? I mean terrorism, uh, you know, is one right. thing, but right. uh, I mean it's not that they're not important, but they yeah. don't seem to kind of logically go together in the same category. Well it made uh. me, actually made me really angry when I found that out mm -hmm. because it's like 
there are a lot of examples of uh, using what seem like feminist positions to justify um, uh, really, I mean, racist uh, positions, mm -hmm. racism and um, Western imperialism. And this just seemed like another example of that. Uh, you know, it's not, it's highly unlikely that Trump really cares about violence against women since he's threatened to cut all of the funding for uh, Violence Against Women Act grants in the upcoming budget. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know if that's actually going to happen, but you know, like $480 million are going to be cut mm -hmm. out of uh, these programs that help uh, um, victims of domestic abuse mm -hmm. and domestic violence. Um, and I mean, it just seems so ironic that there's a focus on uh, what is really a minor, in, in the U.S. at least, there are like, nobody really knows how many so-called honor killings there are, but mm -hmm. no more than 30 a year, 25 to 30, whereas there's 1,500 women or more who are murdered by their, their partners or spouses every year. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, that, you know. But the domestic statistics. And, and so uh -huh. clearly it's in the interest of, of um, Feeding Islamophobia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to and it, focus on because nobody ever talks about honor killings except in relationship to Islam. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, but yeah, like a high level. That is a, the you know statistically right, a very high level of, of uh, death uh, but, or women uh, murder of women is in the hands of a loved one right. uh, or a partner or right. somebody that they're intimate with or dating or yeah. So yeah. that this is uh, a terrible problem and. and we don't, you know, I guess, I mean, there are statistics being collected about that, but certainly not, uh, there's, it's not a priority, at least not for this new administration. So to focus on, only on uh, violence against women by Muslims is, you know, uh, dis disingenuous, mm -hmm. to say the least. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's where the post-colonial theory kind of comes yeah. in, right? Because there's been a history of invoking um, this desire to protect women yeah. um, as as a part of an imperial mission in in the colonies, right during the the nineteenth century, twentieth right, century, and yeah. we we heard that with with the uh, American led uh, intervention in Afghanistan uh, against yeah, the Taliban, exactly, right? The, yeah. the, the, how they were treating women. Yeah. So the, the I mean, just to, those are great examples. The example of, it remind the Trump order reminded me of the um, when the U.S. Uh, was preparing to bomb Afghanistan, uh, there was a lot of talk about saving Muslim women from the Taliban. Um, and what's ironic is that women and women who had been making people aware of what was going on with the Taliban and uh, were opposing the Taliban were they were also opposed to U.S. bombing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, nobody said to them, "Well, would you prefer to be like?" oppressed by the Taliban or to have your community bombed. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. um, those aren't real choices. Uh, and it was, it really is, has been used as an excuse for um, U.S. imperialism and militarism. If you go back to the 19th century, um, and I think one of the things that uh, we don't under, most people don't understand is that I, I, the attempts to to save women on the part of Westerners has actually had the op it's had the opposite effect. It's in fact uh, associated led to an association of um, the uh, of women's rights with um, Western imperialism, mm -hmm. which is actually kind of the, a lot of the background for why many um, nationalist movements, uh, particularly in the Middle East, mm -hmm. are uh, they 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 latch on to. Um, you know, traditional gender roles mm -hmm. as representing uh, traditional culture because of mm -hmm. that history. Uh, in mm -hmm. British India, for example, um, uh, there was a lot, a, a justification for imperialism um, uh, around violence against women, particularly the practice of bride burning, mm -hmm. sati. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the British passed all these laws to try and not just to stop sati, but then to impose their own ideas about marriage mm -hmm. um, on India. Uh, and that 
led to this association of, um, uh, of women's rights with British imperialism. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was hard to, when Indian nationalism arose, it was hard to make, to, it's made it more difficult for mm -hmm. women's rights to be integrated into that movement. Yeah. Although um, there's a very strong uh, women's rights movement in India today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because of that association with uh, imperialism, the, the, this cultural practice is an object of imperialist yeah. Uh, you know, efforts to, to, to eradicate. So you want right. to you're wanting yeah. to preserve your autonomy, so that develops a symbolism of its own that that exactly. yeah, undermines that. And then women mm -hmm. have to choose are asked to choose between uh, you know women's rights and um, the you know the their identification with their community mm -hmm. and the, their loyalty, the loyalty yeah. to their communities. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's true not just abroad, but also you know, among minority groups in the, yeah. in the U.S. as well. Yeah, and I mean, this practice of sati is, you know, it's a Hindu practice right. or, or associated yeah. with certain, you know, communities um, that are largely Hindu. But, you know, um, so, so it's not just Islam, right? It's right. not just That's the association. Yeah. But, yeah, just as a general kind of practice looking at, at foreign civilizations or cultures. Yeah. And, and recently, you know, we hear a lot of, of international incidents, right, of that, that, Really capture the headlines. Right. Uh, the one, the Delhi, uh, the, the Delhi rape, rape case, case in Delhi, yeah. for example, yeah. which kind of really sparked a lot of, of outrage internationally. But there was also, I don't know if there was a, a lot of attention to it in in India. But you you kind of studied that quite a bit. Well, I, I mean, I talked about this in my talk. I have a friend who's worked on this and. Um, uh, Talk, told me about these women's groups in India mm -hmm. that were really uh, important in, in um, raising consciousness about, um, not just about the, that particular case, which became a kind of you know, huge news sensation and mm -hmm. sparked riots and, and demonstrations all over India. And that's, that's what we heard about. But we didn't hear about um, these women's groups in India that were pushing for the conversation to be not just about, oh, how horrible this person, that this person was, was um, raped and murdered, but mm -hmm. that we need to like put that in the context of uh, the problems that women in India face mm -hmm. every day, just mm -hmm. trying to get to work and navigating public space. Mm -hmm. uh, and those conversations kind of fell I don't know, I don't think most of us heard that, but that was going on on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, this one group in Calcutta that my friend has been, was actually part of, because she's Indian and she was there for some of these um, protests, uh, was organizing regular Take Back the Night mar marches oh, really? every uh -huh. six weeks, I think. Wow. And uh -huh. So to make sure that this wasn't just a one-time yeah. you know, thing and mm -hmm. that, that it became not just an a question of um, of protecting women, mm -hmm. but of really changing the system mm -hmm. and empowering Indian women. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, really interesting. So let's let's continue this after okay. a, a little break here, Linda. Thank okay. you. All right. All right. Okay. Stay tuned. We'll be back in one minute with more global connections. My name is Mark Shklov, and I'm the host of Law Across the Sea. And Law Across the Sea is a program that brings attorneys who have traveled across the sea and live in Hawaii or are staying in Hawaii for a time to talk about their travels, where they're from, where they're going, and bring it all together because really we're all connected some way, although we travel across the sea. So I hope that you'll tune in and watch our program. Thank you very much. You want to talk about some socially sensitive issues relevant to women? Listen to these guys. Well, I think it's important in Judaism that we don't take the Bible literally, we take it seriously. Okay. I agree, and the, really the key to understanding Christianity is compassion. If you're compassionate towards other people, you are living a Christian life, and that relates also to dealing with women and men and women issues as well. Mm. Are women and men equal? They're equal. Who's Why better? Be Who's better? <laughs> Depends tune on in, what. Tune in. Aloha, welcome back to Global Connections. I'm Grace Chang, your host, and today we have in the studio with us is Dr. Linda Leerheimer, professor of history at Hawaii Pacific 
University, and we're talking about violence against women and the myth of rescue. Um, so before the break, Linda was telling us about this topic of, of the, the, the incidents in, in Delhi a few years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the very, very horrible yeah. Yeah, uh, case of a, a gang rape of a, of a, do, a, a medical student, um, but, but how the difference was between the international ex, uh, kind of representation of it and what was actually going on in India by, by women's rights groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, the point I wanted to make was that we tend to think that we know how to help people, mm -hmm. I mean, especially in the West. There's this, this is uh, something that really irritates me, that <laughs> we, we feel like we um, uh, know best and that those poor people in the Global South, they don't really understand and that we need to enlighten them. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a continuation of this, actually, of this imperialist pr project, even by well-meaning people. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas in, if you look at that particular case, and it's just a, one case, there's many cases mm -hmm. yeah. all over, like in Afghanistan, this group, right. the um, Rawa, R-A-W-A, uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, they are, they're the ones, they're, they're working on the ground, they know their communities, mm -hmm. they are, um, sometimes they're more progressive than we are. Mm -hmm. um, for example, one of these groups in India, um, in, in, uh, in invited transgender people to participate in their marches. Uh -huh. um, so that kind of yeah. challenges our prejudices and assumptions that, um, you know, mm -hmm. if you leave the West or you leave the U.S., you, yeah. you know, it's not, people are um, less, I don't know, less enlightened or don't mm -hmm. have, I mean, these pe people all over the world, they know, they know what, what's best for their communities. So. Mm -hmm. They can think for themselves. Right, exactly. So they don't need to be told, oh, you're yeah, oppressed. Yeah, and some, actually, we <laughs> and I think that do. sometimes we in the, the West make things worse for them by, mm -hmm. you know, by um, have, like, through programs that actually impoverish women, um, um, disempower them. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, that's, that's one of the things I think we need to look at ourselves mm -hmm. and look at ourselves critically and also... Mm -hmm look outside of ourselves for models of activism because um, you know what's going on in around the world is um, just as or more um, inspiring and uh, can provide models for us mm -hmm. in our and how to make changes at home. Right. So this is that part of the, the myth of the rescue, right? Like yeah. we really we really uh, are talking about cases that seem to get a lot of international or Western attention, right, because they kind of reinforce for us that, yeah. you know, maybe they're not as, prog you know, well along the lines yeah. as far as progress in gender relations, but um, in the efforts to try to save them, are we really empowering and, and really uplifting and, and, and doing meaningful things to, right. to change the situations uh, of gender imbalance. And well, and that idea of saving others is just inherently unequal. Unequal. Mm -hmm. it, it, it reaffirms uh, uh, this idea that Westerners are superior to others, which is that we need to like break and challenge that myth mm -hmm. that uh, somehow we're superior. And that Every time we talk about saving others, it really is reaffirming. Uh, it's all about it's. It, yeah. it, it's all. It, you can never save somebody unless if they're equal to you, right? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, it's sort of like they're an object to be saved rather than that they have agency. Right. Exactly. Yeah, they can tell you or or, you know, they're. I guess that's the issue. Like I think uh, that came out of this um, discussion is that. Yeah, does the, do the people that purportedly are, we are trying to save, do they have any voice in, and choice? Yeah, well, I mean, they should, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's their, their communities, their lives. I think the problem, too, is that sometimes we um, assume that our problems are everybody else's problems, mm -hmm. right? We, we need to let, not women, because I, I focus on women, but people mm -hmm. in other uh, cultures and parts of the world define what are the key issues for them. Mm -hmm. So for, I think Westerners are really obsessed with um, like women's dress and the repression of women's sexuality. Mm -hmm. what, instead of uh, like m it, focusing on, well, what are asking the women in other 
parts of the world, mm -hmm. what are the key issues that matter to you? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might be poverty or mm -hmm. like water rights, yeah. <laughs> food yeah. security, mm -hmm. um, freedom from being bombed. Those are, mm -hmm. those are feminist issues too, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, I think that it's important for us not to impose our vision of what we think um, progress for women is mm -hmm. on others. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and this historical association between, um, you know, outside efforts to 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 promote women's rights, uh, there is there still that association with with uh, you know in certain countries of, of feminism with with an, the imperialist project. Um, I think there is for for some. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, for um, fundamentalists. Uh, people who want to go back to traditional values, I mm -hmm. think that's definitely part of it. Westernization and, um, and feminism isn't the only thing, but it's associated with Westernization. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for women, women activists who may or may not call themselves feminist, and there are those activists everywhere around the world. Um, I mean, so. I, th I think there's a huge desire for a kind of solidarity, mm -hmm. uh, not mm -hmm. a rejection. Um, I, I mean, obviously that's not blanket, but one of the things that was really striking about the Women's March was how many, uh, there were marches on every continent, including uh -huh. Antarctica. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is the, the march yeah. after the, inaug the day yes. after the inauguration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was really very inspiring because of that, it raised that possibility of solidarity across mm -hmm. uh, cultures. Um, and that doesn't mm -hmm. mean, solidarity doesn't mean that we all have to agree, yeah. uh, but that um, we need to work together uh, to create global change across boundaries, mm -hmm. not creating more boundaries, you know, mm -hmm. but, but uh, finding ways to, um, I guess solidarity is working together for a common uh, project uh, uh, people with diverse interests working mm -hmm. together for a common goal. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so Without imposing agendas. Right, locally. exactly. Uh -huh. And listening to one another and, and um, yeah. acknowledging that we may not always agree on what the important issues are. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was, I'm hoping that that impetus will, you know, that that will carry through. Mm -hmm. um, Continue onward. Yeah, yeah. it's not. It uh -huh. wasn't just a United. It's something that happened in the United States, but the fact that women in Africa and in um, you know South America and all over were mm -hmm. marching in solidarity. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot of promise. And very <laughs> different, right, from what you were talking about. What you, what you, where you started with with the you know the immigration yeah, order, you know, opposite. and trying to or, or other you know uh, top down efforts to try to you know or use use this this. Uh, purported purpose of, of wanting to save women um, right. versus this really kind of bottom up uh, yeah. of like, you know, more empowerment, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we were talking about how um, uh, I, I'm always very wary about this idea of saving anybody. Um, and one of the, it, this, this is true in the Delhi rape case, but also here uh, when I remember when the when the allegations against Trump came out, there was all these people who were appalled. We wouldn't want that happening to our wife or daughter, mm -hmm. but it's this wanting to protect women. Mm -hmm. That's almost as that's that's almost as bad as that 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 impulse to protect is actually, um, you know, reaffirming. Uh, women's sub, uh, subordinate mm, status, mm -hmm. right? A weaker position. Right, uh -huh. where um, the goal should be to empower women and not, and not have them be reliant on male protection. So, mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the points that the Delhi, hmm. or hmm. the Delhi um, feminists were making as well. Uh -huh. you know, refusing to let the conversation be about, you know, we don't want this happening to uh -huh. our daughters, but, yeah. like, you know, this is, a human rights issue. This is an issue that goes beyond wanting to protect them. And in fact, uh -huh. protecting them doesn't solve anything because it just um, leads to more policing of mm -hmm. women. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this is this is uh, maybe one way to see these these uh, 
efforts to protect women from honor killings or yeah. from the Taliban and their, yeah, exactly. uh, is, is that it's, it's protecting them, but that's keeping them subordinate. That's sort of like reaffirming right. their, yeah, their like weak we, position. And either we as Westerners know what's oh, okay. best. Mm -hmm. It's not that different from, you know, we as men, you know, in their own culture saying, that, you know, they need to, they, we need to listen uh -huh. to what they, they, um, uh, need, yeah. but uh -huh. I mean, it's all, it is a problem because at the e end of the day, what do we do then? Um, I, like, well, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> leave, leave people thinking that we should just, you know. Well, in the beginning, you said you were yeah. talking about global feminism, right? Right. Yeah, right. Which is kind of and the, the S is important. It's not mm -hmm. just like one, you know, one movement where everybody's going to agree. Mm -hmm. but, you know, we need to find ways to work together across uh, boundaries so that we don't. Um, reaffirm so so that we I mean we can we can help each other mm -hmm. rather than one person helping mm -hmm. the other whether it, ra rather than it being about saving people yeah I mean and it doesn't it doesn't appear on the news very often these issues unless they're very sensational but you know at least so there are many more things going on than the women's marches across the globe you right, know in January right. but that at least shows an instance of right. that kind of so global, we need to work on the grassroots yeah. level to create um, connections and coalitions mm -hmm. to help uh, improve the situation of women around the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of good, good evidence of that. And I think, well, today we have all of these conversations going because of the unity that, that um, have, has been evolving. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So the conversation is ongoing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for the great points and, and okay. this uh, Excellent discussion, Linda. Thank you for having me. Come back again it. anytime. <laughs> <laughs> thank I you. Will. All right. Thanks. Okay, thank you all for tuning in to Global Connections. I'm Grace Chang, and I'm the host of Global Connections here every Thursday at 1 p.m. See you next time.